thank you, cards from uh, Donna and the Jenkins family and the Wilson family. They send a thank you card for the church, for the flowers and the prayers and uh, the coming and the comfort of the Valley Fellowship going there the Daniel. evening rather, okay. might as well be morning, uh, turn to the book of Psalms chapter 89, Psalms chapter 89, and I hope you brought uh, pen and paper because we're going to be all over the Bible, amen, <laughs> amen, you say how do you know because I have been all over it all day, all night, and uh, I'll tell you what, I, I studied and I prayed and I prayed and I studied and I was up till late last night. Still didn't get settled. Had about five pages of stuff that I've written down. I will use that stuff because you don't ever study God's Word that you don't get to use it. I may not get to use it tonight, but I get to use it. Amen. Amen. It might be on my job. It may be in a doctor's office. I got to do a lot of that one-on-one -on -one in the doctor's office. Man, there ain't nothing like that. They get somebody that's uh, wandering minds a lot to know, and uh, I, had, uh, I had the whole thing going on there. Amen. It, it was a blessing. Had the whole Bible study in the doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> you can sure tell who's on the Lord's side when you do that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some people look like you haven't had a bath in a while when you go do that. They all curl up at the nose. Some of them get up and leave and puff and puff, and that's okay. God's Word is spirit and it's true. Amen. God's Amen. Word works. Amen. Amen. I remember that people used to hound me with the Word of God. They, they'd sow good seed on me and I'd just block it. You know? I'd, my sisters would give me scripture and I'd block them. Because you can't, the Word of God has no effect on me because I don't need that crutch. <laughs> and that Word is spirit and truth. It'd get down in there and when I'd get by myself, it would run back yes. across my mind. Yes. Yes. A man shall die, but man dies shall he live again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Scripture said, uh, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and he loses his own soul? The fact of it is, you've got the reality that people do die. And they go somewhere. And everything the Word of God has said is being true on this side. I, I very seriously doubt as a matter of fact, I, I have cast my all Amen. on this <coughs> of this book. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Some people Amen. don't hold that. They say it's just a book. It's just man's writing. Say what you will, but you'll face it. Amen. 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 That's not what we're going to have tonight. I, I literally got this right before it's time to come here. And I got part of it last night and part of it. I, uh, Psalms 89. Verse 15. Psalms 89 and 15, the Bible says, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound that shall walk. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. And in thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Father, I ask you, Lord, to bless the reading of your word, and God, that it would just bless us this day. Lord, may it equip us to be able to face and to answer the issues of life and to be able to, uh, Lord, to incorporate it into our soul and spirit. Father, that God, that it can be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Forgive us, Lord, we come short of your glory. God, you know my flesh, you know the condition of it this night. Lord, you know my spirit, the condition of my spirit. And Father, I, you know my, my coming in and my going out. I ask you, Lord, for mercy. I pray, Father God, that you can set me aside. And Lord, that you can uh, bring glory from this vessel tonight. And God, uh, I, I'm tired in my flesh. I'm weak in my flesh. But Lord, Paul said this. He said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. 
But Lord, you told him that your strength was made perfect in weakness. And I ask you, God, to manifest yourself to us tonight. And God bless your word to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I want to speak to you on the blessed. I want to be numbered with that crowd that's blessed. I don't want to be on the cursed side. I don't want to be at the side, and I don't want to be numbered with those who are cursed. And boy, there's a lot of folks that have been accursed and that are accursed, and both in this life and in the life to come. I've seen people that their life is a big, uh, a big uh, a shadow over top of their life. I mean, it's like they're under a curse, and there's no joy or no peace or no, 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 uh, no, no rest inside their being, and, and it just seems like tragedy follows all the time. But the Bible tells us here in verse number 15 of Psalms 89, he said, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Now, he did not say, blessed are they that hear the joyful sound, because there's a lot of folks that's know that's heard the joyful sound that didn't heed it. There's a lot of people that's heard the joyful sound, and it had no effect on them at all. But he said, blessed are they, or is the people, that know the joyful sound. Not that hear it, but that know it. In John chapter number 10, and verse number 10, 27, Jesus tells us this. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. A deliberate choice. Amen. They know him, and he knows them. Amen. The Lord said, I, he said, listen, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the door to the sheepfold. He said, uh, he, said he that uh, comes in and out, he, he said this in verse 1 of chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not in by the door of the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. He said, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Hallelujah. Listen, the Lord said in verse 9, I am the door, if by me any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That is a promise from Almighty God. But here in the Psalms, and the same Spirit wrote the book, and God, as it's, it's amazing that He part of it's been written 5,000 years ago, part of it 8,000 years ago, part of it 2,000 years ago, and they line up just yeah, like that. Right. Men had written it that never met each other on different sides of the continent. Yeah. We were thousands of years apart yeah. and never had communication yeah. by yeah. telegraph or telephone or even by letter. Didn't even know the other exist, and yet they pinned down the exact same truth. Yeah. Listen, I could tell some truth to her, and she could tell it to her, and she could tell it to him. He tell it to him and go all the way through. When it gets back to where I am, it won't be exactly yeah. one of the words right. verbatim. The same thing I said, but yet God's word is. Yes, amen. amen. Praise God. And it's centuries and billions of people yes. later. That's right. And it comes out. He said, blessed is the people. I want to be in the a number with that crowd. Amen. amen. There's, a, there's a song that they used to sing back years ago in church when I first got in. He said that he's one of that crowd. I can't think of the name of it, but I know Sister Dorothy's heard it. I'm, I'm glad to be numbered with that, yeah. with that crowd. Amen. 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 Uh, he, it was about a story about a man that didn't want to be with that crowd until he got saved. And then he's glad to be with that crowd. Amen. 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 I'll tell you something. There was a time that I didn't want to be with that crowd. No. There was a time I did not want to be with the blessed people. I wanted to be with the cursed children. Yes. Amen. And, uh, but friend, when Jesus came into my heart and saved me, he changed me. I, I, I'm no better than, than anybody of my own self. As a matter of fact, God tells us in Isaiah 64, I believe it is, in Isaiah 64, in verse number 6, he said this, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness is, are as filthy rags, and we do all fade as a leaf, and our iniquity, like the wind, have taken us away. I told a man there at the, at the doctor's office that Monday, I said, uh, he was talking about hypocrites. I said, the reason people don't go to church is because of hypocrites. I said, they go to the gas station, there's hypocrites there. <laughs> they go to the grocery stores, there's hypocrites there. They go to bars, there's hypocrites there. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, they, they, that ain't why they don't go. He said, why don't they go? I said, because they don't like God. 
or God's people, God's word, or God's church. That's really what it is. I said, that's why I didn't go. The only reason I started going is I fell in love with Jesus Christ and his people, and therefore I want, I want to go. I have something there. I have something invested in there. Amen? I, I have kinship there. That's why I want to go. I said, they don't have to come and see if I'm going to go. They don't have to look me up and call me up and say, are you going? I'm on my left. The only way I'm not going is to have wrecked, gotten bad, sick, or somebody, uh, some tragedy that happened. And a lot of times I come on anyway when those things happen. Amen. You say, there's not many people here, preacher. That's okay. The one that matters is here. As long as he's here, praise God, that's the place to be. Amen. He promised this. He said that as long as we gather in his name two or three, he'd be there in the midst. Amen. That's good enough for me. Amen. Listen, he said this. He said, blessed. He said, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound of that walk. Uh, that walk, he didn't say that sit. He didn't say they that lay around. He said they that know the joyful sound, they shall walk. That is having a forward progress, always making ground, always being delivered from day into day, night into night, being delivered. Praise God, stepping forward, gaining ground, getting victory. Amen. Listen, the Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible said that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, in verse John 1 and 7, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sin. Listen to what the Lord tells us in John's Gospel, chapter number 8, and verse number 12. John chapter 8, verse 12, he said this. He said, the Lord Jesus spake again, and he said, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. I keep holding myself because I, my ribs, every time I take a deep breath, it's like being stabbed. Oh, so bear with me, if you will. When I'm holding myself, I'm not having a heart attack, I don't guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my ribs are really killing me. Kill them, Amen. And, uh, but he tells us here, he said, listen, he said that, that the Lord said if we would follow him, that we'd not walk in darkness. You know, when I walk in darkness is when I take my eyes off the Lord. Yes. Every one of us have walked in darkness. Every yes. one of us do yes. at times walk in darkness. Yes. You may not walk like Mansum, a, a, a serial killer. You may not walk like uh, some of these people that rob places and kill. But friend, any walk away from the Lord Jesus Christ is a step in the darkness. Amen. 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 I mean, it's a step away. At, you know, the Bible tells us that he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. We don't like to, to say that word, sin. I don't like to say sin, but I see sin in my life. You say, well, you do. I try to judge it and try to forsake it and confess it and try to get rid of it. Amen. Try to block it. Try to make no provision for it. Amen. Listen, the Lord tells us, he said, he said I am the light of the world. So if you want to walk in light, just follow Jesus. Just keep him first. Keep him in the forefronts of your thoughts. Amen. Keep him in the forefronts of your heart. Keep him in the forefronts of your home. Keep him in the forefronts of your job. And if you can do that, friend, God, life will be easy yes. for you. Amen. Let me tell you where life will get harder. When you have Jesus in the house and Jesus in the car, but you keep him there when you go outside Amen. of that. <laughs> you say, preacher, uh, people don't do that. Sure they do. Amen. There's going to be people standing in front of you and saying, you never mentioned him to me. You never told me about Jesus. You, you knew I was going to hell. You knew that I was lost. You knew that if I died, I'd go to hell. You're going to get sealed one day. You say, where at, preacher? Revelation chapter 20. The Bible said, when the dead, small and great, stand before God, the books are open. And the dead judged out of those things. Mm -hmm. The book of life is open and every man will be judged. Whosoever's name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. You'll be there if you're saved. If you're truly twice born, you'll be there as a witness, as a testimony. I believe with everything in you that you'll get to see people that you know. Mm -hmm. See people that you just, you just didn't lift up Jesus. I told this story years ago, and 
I used to work for Kenny Wilson, my, my brother-in-law, driving a cab. And it was actually 30-something years ago when I was dating my wife. And uh, we just had met, and every waking hour I had was spent either with her on the phone or talking to her on the phone or trying to get up there and see her. And she lived way up in Maynardville. And uh, one day, I was about to get off from work, and Kenny called me on the radio, and he said, you've got to make a, a run up to the airport. And I didn't want to make that run to the airport. And they told me to, to go get gas, and I went to a station to get gas, and the Holy Ghost of God told me to witness to this man. And I was a young, young man. I was 19 years old. But I can remember it like it was yesterday. And the Spirit said, witness to me. Tell him about it. Tell him about Jesus. And I said, Lord, I'll do this the next time I'm in here, because I was in there a lot. I said, I'll do it. I said, I'm in a big hurry right now. And I got my gas, and I didn't say nothing about the Lord. I got out of there. I shot out to the pop to the airport, picked my fare up, took him where he went, kept, dropped the cab off, got my car, and then went out with my little daughter. Didn't think nothing else about it. Thought everything would be fine. Until I went back over there, and I thought, man, I'm supposed to witness this guy. I'll do that now, on my time. And I went over there, and he wasn't there, so I <coughs> asked the man that was there, I said, how, how come the other guy isn't working? He said, you mean Big John? I said, yeah. He said, oh, he dropped dead with a massive heart attack. I said, when? It was the night I had my date. I mean, it was clear as a bell I was supposed to witness to that guy. I said, do you think you were saved? And he said, I doubt it. He said, that man blasphemed God every other breath. I believe I'll get to see that man again. And I dread it. It makes a difference. You'll get to see people who that you maybe said, oh, they ain't nothing to Christianity. And you had influence in their life, and they said, okay. And that did it for them. Their heart was sealed and hardened, and never again had entrance to the Word of God or the Spirit of God to have ear for them again. And just something you said would be there to, to seal the deal. We need to see that one day. He tells us in in our text in verse 16, he said, Blessed is the people. That, that know the joyful sound. They shall walk. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. You see, they that know it, those that have tasted and saw that God is good and know the fellowship of the Spirit and know what it is to pass from death unto life, friend. God's got some blessings for them. He's got, listen, he promised that his ear was open into your prayers. He, he said that his ears was open. Listen, he said here, he said, he said that, that they, they shall, verse 16, in thy name shall they rejoice all the day long, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. Have you ever seen people that you think they got no reason to be happy, that they're happy? You see people and say, man, why do they have reason to be happy? Their life isn't so great. But they're happy. You say, oh, but they don't have this or that. But they're happy because they got a relationship with Jesus Christ and they're happy. Habakkuk tells us, well, before we go there, let's, Psalms 107 tells us this. As you're turning in verse 16, he said this. He said, in thy name, Shall they rejoice all the day long? Listen, happy is the people of God. Happy is the people of God that knows the joyful sound. The Bible said in Psalms 107 and verse 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Amen. 
You see, God, listen, I've run into people who are looking on what they have financially and possessionally and things that's happened in their life. You'd say, how can they have the peace of God and the joy of God in their heart? Like how could they be satisfied? There was a friend of mine who was a missionary in Belize, and he got to win several people to the Lord. He went over and started a church there, and uh, he, uh, he's a Pentecostal man. He loves the Lord. He's a little different than I am, but he's on the same foundation that I am. He's born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's my brother in the Lord, and I see him. He said there was a lady over there that he had won to the Lord, and he said literally her floor was, was, was dirt that had been swept so much that it was shiny. And he said it was like marble. And he said her house consisted of meager dwellings. She cooked on a 30 or a 50 gallon garbage can lid. And he told her he'd come back in here to get to get uh, supplies. He said, I'm going back to the States. And this lady had just got saved. He said, honey, he said, I'm going back. He said, I, I can't think of the name he called her, but it's a weird name. I'm probably not weird for where she is, but for, for the United States, it's a strange name. You don't hear it very often. He called her name. He said, he said, I'll get you anything that I can afford to get there. What would you like? And he said, she looked at her house and she looked in there and she said, I like a Bible. He said, I'm going to get you a Bible. He said, I promise you, I'll get you. I told you I was going to get you that, but anything else that you can think of that you would like. She said, I just don't see a thing in the world I need but a Bible. <laughs> People say, oh, bless her heart. She's just ignorant. She's not ignorant. No, she's not. No. She had a relationship yes, with Jesus she Christ. Yes, she did. And she worshipped him. Amen. Was she Baptist? No. You know something? He's not coming for Baptist. He's trying to save. Blood bought. Twice born. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost just. Hey. Glory to your name, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. He tells us, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you won't say so, why won't you say so? Are you ashamed of it? Do you really believe it so? If you don't believe it so, don't say it. But if you are, if you are redeemed, say so. Say so all the time. Say so everywhere you go. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And friend, there was an enemy after you, the enemy yes. of Satan, yes. who comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And if he had his way, if he has his way, he would destroy you, take everything you got, yes. ruin your life, ruin your family, ruin everything, mm -hmm. because he's a destroyer. Mm -hmm. When he speaks of a lie, he speaks of his own, because he's the father of it. Amen. He said this. He said in verse 8 of Psalms 107, Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of man. Verse 9, For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought them down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of all their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and out of the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron and sundered fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquity are afflicted. afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. And they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them 
and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of man. Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. You see, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let me tell you, that this flesh, this world, and the devil, all of that is trying to steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your, get your mind fixed so you're always cumbered about and never having a clear time to be able to set your mind on things above. He said, set your mind on things above and not on things below. He said, if there be any pure, if there be anything holy in Philippians chapter 4, may be any good report, if there be any, uh, any of these things of virtue, he says, set your mind on these things. Yes. Because there's where the blessings are going to flow. In Psalms 150, in Psalms 150, and verse 1, he tells us this. Psalms 150 and 1, he said, He said, Praise you the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary. You know what He didn't say to do? Listen to the praise of the Lord in the sanctuary. He didn't say, Listen to the Lord. He didn't say, He said, For you to praise Him. Somebody's phone's ringing. Amen. He said, For you to praise Him. He said, For you to lift up His voice. He said, For you to give glory Amen. unto God. You see, they that know the joyful sound shall rejoice. They that know the joyful sound shall give praise unto Him. They shall rejoice in the God of their salvation. He said here, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellence. Amen. Psalms 149, 1. Praise the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song in His praise in the congregation of the saints. Of saints. To sing, our, to sing His praise. Philippians 4 and 4 said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. He wants you to rejoice in Him. And God's praise is never outdated. I've seen people praise Him at funeral homes. I've seen people praise Him in hospital beds. I've seen, I've seen people, listen, they come to me and that, that doctor told me, he said, get your affairs in order, you're going to die and not live. And I'll tell you something, that's hard words to hear. I didn't go, oh boy. But that man looked at me and the next thing he said, he said, get your affairs in order. Because you're not going to be around. And buddy, he attacked my faith when he did that. Yeah. And I said, hey man, I ain't going nowhere until Jesus says so. And my affairs have been in order for over 30 years. I said, are yours? Yeah. He said, well you're deceiving yourself if you think you're not going to die. I said, one out of one dies. Hey. <laughs> hey. He said, you're going soon. I said, I may do it, but I said, you may go before me. <laughs> he just got up and, and left. It's okay. I, I was trying to get my mind and my spirit yes. around hearing that, and somebody just getting up and walking off from me. He didn't say, you want a glass of water? He didn't say, would you like somebody to talk to? He just said it and got up and left. Especially when I started combat. It's been a lot of years. Yeah, and praise God. Amen. That's right. He may take me tonight, and if he does, I'll see you on the other side. Amen. He may take me this Wednesday. He does, I'll see you on the other side. He might take me till Jesus comes. And if it's the so, I'll see you in the air. <laughs> and hey, man, because I'm part of that number. I'm booked in with that crowd. He said this, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll close here shortly. He said, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Basically, he's saying those that are, that are born to him, those that know him. I know this because in verse 26, he 
He said about David, he shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Those that know this know him as Savior and God. But how do you, how do you know? How do you know? If somebody asked you proof that you're going to heaven, what would you say? I mean, what's the proof that you're going to heaven? How, do you, how can you prove you're saved? The Bible plainly <coughs> says that there, in Romans that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and there's none righteous, no, not one. So you're a sinner. The Bible says you're not good enough to go to heaven. So what's the proof that you can give? What's the proof? It's, it's the proof of faith. By faith, you know it. Galatians chapter 3. In the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse number 26, listen to what he said. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. He tells us this. He said, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as of you have been baptized into Christ, he's not talking about water baptism, he's talking about 1 Corinthians where he says, by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body. It's being baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Ghost of God on, at conception. And that's in 12-13 uh, of Corinthians. He said, verse 27, For as many as you, of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. For you are the children of God, by faith in Jesus Christ. So what he's saying is, is this. The object of your faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Turn with me to Acts chapter 20. This won't take you just a few minutes. Acts chapter 20 and verse... Let's look at verse 21. Verse 20 and 21. Paul says this, And, and how I kept nothing back, that was profitable unto you. Talking to the, to the church there in uh, Taurus, and he said, those at uh, uh, Ephesus, he said, And how I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you, and have showed you, and have taught you publicly, and from house to house, testifying to both the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So Galatians tells us that you're the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And verse 21 of Acts chapter 20 tells us that repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the object of your faith. What object is it? The death the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is. His finished work on Calvary. That's what you believe. That's who you receive. You receive His atonement. His blood be upon you. <laughs> what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Listen. So you can prove this by, by if you really believe it. Do you really believe it? Yes. You believe he died for your sins. Yes. Do you believe he's virgin born? you believe yes. that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary? Yes. I'll tell you who did, who believed it. Was her, her fiancé believed it. I'll tell you, you know why he believed it? Not just because she told him, but because the, the angel of the Lord came to him and told him, don't be afraid to take her. Yeah. I know you was probably going to be skeptical about this, Joseph, but it's okay. What she's saying is so. Yeah. The Holy Ghost overshadowed her. It's amazing. Now they can take test tube. They take the woman's egg out of her, take the man's seed from him, put it in a tube, and it does what God intended for it to do. But they think that God somehow can't do that without a sexual, uh, you know, with a virgin. But he did. Yes, he did. Amen. Yes. And she bore Jesus Christ. Yes. He died in your place on Calvary. And he rose the third and fourth day. Yes. They, they, listen, they put Roman, they put centurion 
chariots there. They put guards there. They had the tomb sealed and guards guarding the door. And the Bible said that they fell as dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And he appeared to over 500 people at one time. Yeah. 500. That's quite a crowd. Yeah. I'll tell you another way you can know you're saved is if you have love for the brother. If you really have love for the brother. I tell you, when I see a brother fall, it is not, I don't care if they've struggled their whole Christian life or if they've been a super saint. And I've seen both fall. I've seen people who shine for the Lord and when they failed, everybody that wasn't quite where they was and wasn't being used like they was, it's like they was happy that he failed. And that's wrong. Christians are the only breed, man, that kills the wounded. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be able to reconcile, to call back, to be first, cast the olive branch. Amen. And all of us fall short into this. In John 13 and 35, Jesus tells us this. He said, in John chapter 13, verse 35, he said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. I mean, if you truly care. Let me tell you, it's really strange. Kids know whether you like them or not. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't have the, the IQ you do, but let me tell you what they have. They've got spiritual discernment. And it's, they can discern things about people. They can, that's right. They can, they can read the spirits. You have a spirit that's on you. Amen. That's right. They can sure do that. In 1 John 3 and verses 10 and 11, he tells us this. First John chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, he said, In this is the children of God are manifest, and they're made known, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteous is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that we heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, whereof he slew him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. There it is again. They see somebody doing good, it makes them jealous. First John 4 and 20, he said, <laughs> he tells us this. We love him. In verse 19, it says, we love him because he first loved us. He said, if a man say, I love God, and boy, a lot of people say, well, me and the man upstairs are okay. Yeah. Me and the bosses, you got to understand it. Amen. He's not your Lord God, your Master, That's Savior, right. and your King. You That's right. That's right. You're just saying that for my sake. Or to ease conscience. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loves his brother also. God didn't say you had to go and drink coffee with them and hang around with them. If you love somebody, that don't mean you're going to go along with them. If you love somebody, you love them enough to tell them the truth. That's right. You love them enough to show them right. You love them enough. Listen, I've had to say no to people I've loved. I've had to, I've had to make tough decisions. And they said, don't you love me? I said, yeah, I do love you. 
That's why I'm not going to do that. Well, I don't understand that. I said, that's because you don't love. Oh, but I love. Me and God's got to understand. <laughs> you really love, but not the right one. <laughs> Amen. But lastly, you know that you have hope for heaven because you follow the Lord. Who you follow? This is amazing. I see a lot of people saying, they try to tell me this. They say, oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Well, who do you follow? What crowd are you with? Before you answer that, let me ask you this. What crowd do you feel comfortable with? Do you feel comfortable with the blasphemy crowd? Do you feel comfortable with the, with the pornography crowd? Do you feel comfortable with the dope crowd, the drinking crowd? Or do you feel comfortable with the godly crowd? I mean, because that'll tell you.